Okay, so we're now going to solve this finite difference solution, and, and we're going to use um, Excel to, to do the actual numerical solution for us because it's really simple. Um, but this is um, oh the the uh, problem that I'm going to solve for. I guess I shouldn't have gotten rid of that so quickly. Let's see. So this is the problem we're going to solve. We're going to solve for a permeameter. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to solve the finite difference for a very simple permeameter where we've got a constant head of 100 along this boundary and a constant head of 0 along this boundary. So we better get flow lines that are in this direction and we better get equipotential lines in the nearest direction. This is probably the easiest flow net you're ever going to draw. It just looks like a grid, right? So if we don't get the answer for that one, then this probably isn't a very good solution. And then I'm going to do a very simple two-dimensional one. That's really a one-dimensional flow, right? I'm going to do a very simple one where I'm going to turn this into a, a, a no-flow boundary. I'm going to open up a hole on the top of the permeameter. We're going to let it flow up. And then we better get you know, some, some kind of a flow net that looks something like this, right? So that, those are the two problems we're going to do. Okay, so this is my... Um, this is my discretization of that problem. So every cell in here represents a node. Uh, and, then, and then down here below, I'm going to do a, don't do that, please. Down here below, I'm going to do a little plot. I'm just going to do a surface, uh, a contoured uh, plot here. Every value in here represents one of the values at the, the node up, up here. OK, so you remember in every, we said that the solution for our, our, uh, our Laplace equation was that every node Within the, within the center, not the boundary nodes. Everything but the boundary nodes, all we wanted was the head at that location to be equal to the average of the heads of, heads of the three locations around it, right? So that's what this equation is. I'm, I'm in cell D5, right? And this equation says that the value at D5 is equal to the value at C5 plus D4 plus E5 plus D6 all divided by 4. So that's my solution, right? That's, that, that's my... Um, First order Taylor series expansion solution. Cool. So all I got to do is cut. Oh, I got to tell you one thing. You got to do in order in order to make this work. You got to go to um, Excel. You got to tell tell it to, to uh, do an iterative solution because we're going to have re, we're going to have a recursive uh, solution here. So you got to go there. You got to go to Excel. You got to go to options. You got to go down to formulas. You have to check. Um, to do a manual recalculation because otherwise it's going every time you enter a thing it's going to try and recalculate and then you got to tell it to to enable iterative calculations and that you know have you ever write a recursive equation in Excel that says hey I can't solve this because you said this cell is equal to that is a function of that cell but that cell is a function of this cell and you got something wrong with your equation well that's exactly what we're going to do and we're going to program a whole bunch of equations like that in there and then we're going to say please start at this point and keep calculating and keep calculating up to ten thousand calculations oops or until the maximum change in any place is, is 0 0.01. So we're going to let Excel do our solution for it, just through an iterative solution. So you got to do that. <clears throat> and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this, um, this cell value, and I'm just going to copy it. Oops. If I can do it on here. I'm just going to copy it all the way down there. Right? And then I'm just going to copy that. Well, I'll do it. I'll do it keyboard because so I'm going to just copy that from here all the way across. Oops. Control V. Poof. So now, at every one of these cells, the value is equal to the average of its nearest neighbors. Okay, everybody with me? So now, when you got to deal with the boundary conditions, right? Well, what's the boundary on the, on, on the left-hand side? What kind of a boundary condition is that on the left-hand side? Poof, 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 right here. What's the boundary condition? What's this boundary condition right here? Total head. Same with this one over here. The, the total head on the left hand side is 100, and the total head on the right hand side is 0. So, all I got to do to come back here is I'm just going to write 100 in every one of these cells. I was lazy, I just wrote 100 in the first cell um, and said, whoop, I got to write 100 in here, C4, right? 100 in here, 
And I'm just going to say every other cell is just equal to that cell. Okay? And then I'm going to go to the other side. Boop, and I'm just going to put zero in every cell. So I satisfied that boundary condition, right? Um, now I got to sat satisfy these boundary conditions. How do I? How did I satisfy the no-flow boundary condition? Well, the no-flow boundary condition. I just said that this one was equal to the value at the cell on the left plus the value at the cell on the right plus two times the value of the cell within the body divided by four. Right? Cool. And at the top. I've got the same equation, except that it's two times the cell below. All right, so I have now set up my um, finite difference solution. Life is good. All I have to do is calculate it now. So how am I going to calculate it? Well, I don't know how Excel does it, but I'm just going to push calculate, and it's going to calculate. And what, it, what it's going to do is it's going to go to the first cell. It's really simple. It's just a, this is a brute force solution. It's, it's, it, it's an iterative solution. It's going to calculate that. It's just going to go across rows, calculate value at every cell. And it's just going to keep doing this and it keeps doing this and doing this until it either hits 10,000 or the values are less than 0 0.01, which I put in the front thing. And look at this. Wow. Those are my equipotential lines. Those are contours of head. And is that what we should have for 1D flow? Most excellent. So that's good. Let's try the 2D flow one and see if it works. So you guys are going to get to do this problem, by the way. Okay, so for the 2D flow, what I said was I want to open up a space on the top of here, right? So what's the boundary condition going to be? So now, now I want to do this problem. So now I want a boundary condition here that is constant head, that's going to be zero there. This is still going to be zero. And then I'm going to, these other two boundaries, this is going to be, a, this is now going to be a flow boundary all the way there, and this is going to be a flow boundary all the way there. Okay? So, I got to change this boundary over here to a flow boundary. Well, that's pretty easy. All I'm going to do is here is say that um, this value then is going to be equal to um, two times the value inside, right, uh, plus the value above, plus the value below, um, all divided by four, right? And I just gotta copy that guy all the way down here. Now this value in the corner is a different value. It, 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 it's, it's, that's a different boundary condition because it's a, it's a corner, right? And you can look this up. I gave you, I think I gave you the uh, appendix uh, from the book to read that has all these solutions in it. This one, I, I'll just tell you right offhand, is going to be equal to um, the one above uh, plus the one to the left uh, divided by two, and I screwed that up. Uh, and this one's going to be the same thing. This is going to be equal to the left plus the below divided by two. And now I got to set. Uh, I got to change my bounding condition up here. Uh, so I, I don't know how far I'm going to go back. That looks good. So I'm just going to go here and set the boundary con the other boundary condition, which is just x potential equal to zero, right? So I'm just go zero, 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 zero. Now I've reset my boundary conditions, right? So now all I need to do is run my problem again by hitting calculate. It's right down here. You can also just hit, it, it's F9. It's F9. F9 to calculate. Yeah, or under formulas you can say recalculate, right? So where's it? It's uh, right here. Um, I never use this one, so where's it? Where's the calculate button here? It's the top right. Oh, this one right here. Oh yeah, calculate now. Poof. That's it. You now know how to solve flow problems using finite differences. You can also solve because uh, let's see if I, I can do this real fast because. Equipotential lines and flow lines are, are conjugates of each other. You can solve this for the for the flow lines 
just by solving the conjugate problem. The conjugate problem, all you have to do is change the equipotential boundaries for flow boundaries and flow boundaries for equipotential boundaries. So let's do that real quick. I realize you don't understand that, but we'll just do it real quick. I'll show you how simple it is, and then you go, I don't really understand that, but that's pretty amazing. So in this one, this, 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 the, the colors are kind of messed up right now, but this was, well, in fact, let's just fix the colors. This is now a, got to fill that thing with, um, this color, hope that was right. Whoops, that wasn't right. Um, and I fill this one. No, I don't want to drag down. I want to fill this one with yellow. That's not what I wanted to do. Those are my boundaries, right? Got X potential here and, and no flow there. So now all I got to do is switch those. So all I got to do is turn these boundaries into um, I got to turn those into no flow boundaries, and I got to turn these into X potential boundaries. So this one is going to be zero zero. Oops. This is going to be zero all the way down. And then on the other end, so this is going to be zero all the way over. Ooh, that was interesting. Let's see, where did this, how far did I see that flow line went back here? Oh well, about right there, let's see. So this, this is going to be uh, 100. Uh, so this is now going to be 100 on this side. This is all covered in that, that appendix that I gave you before too. And now these become, um, this becomes a no flow boundary. So this one is going to be equal to, oops, this is going to be equal to 2 times right plus up plus down divided by 4. Did I type that right? Okay. Copy that guy down to here. These are corners now, so I've got to put the corner boundary condition, which is going to be equal to up plus right divided by 2. And this one's going to be equal to right plus down divided by 2. Now, if I did this right, which we'll find out, these are now the flow lines. It's a conjugate problem. Remember, remember we talked about the full lines, the exponential lines were conjugates of each other? So, it, and that, I, that appendix that I gave you to read is all, it covers all this and all what's going to be built. Now, the one thing that doesn't allow you to do is to deal with boundaries that are not, boundary conditions that are neither flow lines nor exponential lines, and we have that problem in a couple of things. We'll talk about that in just a second. But I think what I'll do now is, um, in this baby, oh, function of 10. So 